Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Gym Hacks Reviews. Today I'm reviewing the Rogue Rhino Standalone Belt Squat. This is by far the most expensive piece of gym equipment I've ever purchased. Stay tuned to see if it's worth it. I have come to accept that my days of heavy barbell squats are behind me. Chances are I probably won't even use the safety squat bar that much anymore. But that's where the Rogue Rhino comes in really handy. You have the safety of the belt squat, but you're able to overload the legs really heavy without some of the risks that are involved with the barbell squat. Also, before I made this purchase, I looked at quite a few other belt squats. I looked at the winning belt squat, which is quite a bit more expensive than this. I looked at the Squat Max MD, but that's pretty much similar to what I had been doing using the loading pin and the boxes. I looked at the Titan belt squat. In fact, I actually ordered the Titan belt squat, but I canceled that order because I was starting to see some quality issues with Titan based on some of my recent purchases. And then I also looked at the Bales of Steel belt squat, but that, again, was out of stock when I was trying to make the purchase. And it's a lever system. And I really don't want a lever belt squat because of some of the shearing forces that you will encounter using those when you're starting to go heavy. And for anyone who isn't familiar with what a shear force is, this is the best way to describe it. You have one force going this way and another force going this way. And with the Squat Max MD and the Rogue Rhino, as long as you're positioned correctly on the Rogue Rhino, you won't have any shearing forces. Next, I want to rewind a little bit and show you what it was like getting the belt squat here. And it was amazing that it only took two weeks to get here. I ordered this on April 1st and it arrived on April 14th. I couldn't believe that it arrived that quickly because on Rogue's website, they said it would be shipped in 30 to 60 days. And then I later received an email saying that Rogue was having trouble with some of their carriers. So I didn't expect to get this thing for maybe three or four months, two weeks. I was extremely impressed. Thank you, Rogue. I made room for the Rogue Rhino standalone belt squat to go in this space. To do that, I had to move the lever gym over, but I still have plenty of room as there's my compact leg sled, leg press, a couple of pieces from Titan, all of my dumbbells, and then of course my squat rack. Luckily, the belt squat arrived on a box truck instead of in a tractor trailer. That way the box truck was able to back up right to my garage door. It was a tight fit getting the belt squat off of the truck. The lift gate was just big enough. And as you can see, the belt squat arrived in perfect condition. I've seen some arrive that look like they've been damaged in transit, but mine was in perfect condition. It's obvious that Rogue took a lot of time packaging this product to ensure that nothing got damaged during transit. I was extremely impressed with how everything was packaged individually or securely packaged in the largest box. I expected the Rhino by five o'clock and it eventually got here by about 6.15. And I wanted to get it here as soon as possible because there's supposed to be pretty severe storms. But luckily it got in the garage before the storms hit and I was able to clean up everything just as the rain is starting to come down now. So all things considered, it does not look like there are a whole lot of pieces to this. And I know there, I think somebody by the last name McFarland who was able to do it in an hour and a half. I don't think that I'll be able to do it that quickly. He was able to do uh, an hour and a half time on his second build. So I'm hoping to maybe complete it in about three hours. But that's all there is. Of course, I'm sure there's quite a bit in each one of these boxes. The size of these bolts is absolutely insane. And I am a little bit worried because the only directions that I see are the ones for the Rogue Rhino drop-in. So hopefully I'll be able to find the standalone direction soon. The feet are boxed by themselves. And I'm extremely impressed with the packing job. Everything is in perfect condition so far. Here's what it looks like with everything unboxed. I honestly think it took me longer to unbox that seated dip machine than it took me to unbox this belt squat machine. And luckily I found the Rogue Rhino standalone instructions. I'm at this point so far, and I did see another review where it's easier to tilt this piece up to get this bolt right here. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. So here's what you have to do to really make getting to this bolt a lot easier. And I am really grateful to the guy who mentioned doing this because it does make a big difference in tightening this bolt because it is in a very awkward place to get to. So far, this is pretty straightforward. The only issue that I'm really having is working with these wrenches. 
I feel like Edward Scissorhands trying to put this thing together. If I had a socket that would fit these bolts and these nuts, I'd be a whole lot better off. Here's the next step. These are getting ready to attach to the platform and this piece will slide in the bottom. So that was a pretty easy step. Just make sure your bumpers are facing you and that the sticker is also facing you. Also, when you get started, make sure the pulley is on the bottom, not the top. At this point, I've run the pulley. I attach that cross member. The rhino horn is on the back side. Getting there. The next step is just tightening these bolts so that I can attach the platform to the Rhino upright. The quality of this machine is exceptional. And one of the only things that really stands out, these pulleys are plastic. So hopefully they'll be able to hold up over time. But I have had these wheels, these pulley wheels break on me on other machines. So I thought this part initially was a little bit tricky, but it's actually pretty simple. You have two of these plates. The thicker one sits on the bottom and it fits into the platform almost like a puzzle piece. You put these rollers in, and then you put another plate on top once the rollers are in, and then you tighten it down. Just make sure that this stopper is on the outside before you put all of this on. Now one of the last things to do is bolt those plates onto this platform, and there are quite a few bolts, so this will take a little bit of time. I'm getting ready to wrap things up. Just to put the handles on, the handles have a nice amount of UHMW on the inside just so you don't tear your uprights up as you're adjusting them. And so as long as that bolt doesn't exceed one and a quarter inches from here to here, the adjustment's good. I didn't have that little tool in there that helps you measure exactly what it should be, so I just had to use a tape measure. Here's the finished product. It took me probably two and a half hours to put this piece together. And I can't get over how exceptional the quality is. It makes me want to outfit my entire gym with road pieces. And in order to get in all of the pieces, I had to move those two Titan pieces out of the way. And it's just night and day difference in the quality between, for example, just those two Titan pieces and the Rogue Belt Squat. And of course, these Titan pieces are a lot less expensive. For as long as I've been doing belt squats, I've only used the Spudding Belt. The Spudding Belt only has one setting, whereas the Rogue Belt has five different settings. This allows it to fit users of different heights. It also allows me to get more tension at the top of the movement. Both belts come in right at about five feet. The Spudding Belt is just a tad bit shorter than the Rogue Belt. The Rogue Belt provides a little more cushion Whereas the spudding belt is just a canvas. And on the ends of the spudding belt, they're basically burned so they don't fray. But the ends here will cut into your pants and tear your pants up a little bit. And the spudding belt will tear your skin up a little bit more than the rogue belt. One of the many things that makes the Rhino so appealing is its relatively small footprint. A much smaller footprint than say the Titan belt squat. So this belt squat is only 49 inches wide and about 61 or 62 inches deep, including the band pegs. However, I would reserve about 72 inches of depth just so that you can comfortably get the plates on and off. And I would reserve about 80 inches of width just so that you can comfortably get around the machine. I was worried about this cable getting frayed with some movements such as the seated row, but luckily inside of the platform, there are these rollers which will keep that cable from getting frayed. There's another one under the platform over that bolt. And then there is another one over this bolt. I have seen some rhinos that the cable hasn't been run correctly and the cable's going over this bolt. So make sure that yours is run correctly and goes under the bolt. Against Rogue's recommendation, I did not bolt down my rhino. So far, that doesn't seem to be a problem. According to the directions, I have my handles upside down, but this is the correct way to have the handles. 
Rogue included these collars, which will only fit over those weight horns. Unfortunately, those collars will not fit over any other bar that I have. In Coop's review of the Rhino, he wasn't happy about the sticker. I don't find it to be that big of a deal. I think it looks pretty good. Along the uprights, the settings are lasered out, which is definitely a nice touch compared to, say, Powertex Rack, where the settings are just simply painted on. It's awesome that Rogue included these band pegs welded on because with some belt squats, there aren't band pegs or you have to pay extra to have band pegs put on. The handles are really easy to adjust. All you have to do is pull out this pin and then pull out that pin and the handles can slide up or down. As for the paint job, it does look really good and it is durable. However, everything is a glossy black except for the platform, which is a flat black. I would prefer for the entire machine to be a flat black. At this point in time, I don't have any complaints about the Rogue Rhino. However, before I made this purchase, I did see some complaints that the cable may come off track from time to time. But as long as you have this bolt in place, I don't see how the cable can ever come off track. The other complaint that I've heard is that if you're trying to do some movements without holding onto these bars, the bars will fall back into place. However, mine seem to stay put pretty well, but there is a pretty easy solution in locking those bars in place if you want the pulley to start in the bottom position. And that solution is simply tying a strength band around both of those uprights. That keeps these handles locked in place and it allows you to put the carriage in the bottom position and use the pulley from the very bottom position for things like curls or seated rows. The last complaint that I've heard about the belt squat is the platform could be bigger, but it does have about 48 and a half inches of width and 26 inches of depth. So for me at my height, I can do anything and everything that I want to on the platform, but for someone who's over six feet, it might be a little difficult to do lunges and some other exercises, but for belt squats, it should fit anyone and everyone perfectly. It's not leg day, but of course, I'm anxious to try out this machine. So right off the bat, I threw on 245s and the red bands from Elite FTS. Just in case you're wondering how they attach, there's a peg down there. And I put the belt in the highest ring to get the maximum amount of tension. And it feels so smooth and so effective and if you've watched my other videos you know that i do a lot of belt squatting using a loading pin and those boxes and i just can't describe how much difference it is using a dedicated belt squat instead of a loading pin it's amazing how much better this machine is I didn't really know what I was missing. Before I get into a bunch of movements with the Rhino Belt Squat, I just want to show you a few hacks that you can do in case you don't want to get the Rhino Belt Squat. So here I have an Elite FTS band going from band peg to band peg, and then I'm connected using a carabiner to my Belt Squat belt. I do have a few stall mats stacked up just so that I can get a little extra tension on the band, and I'm just doing step ups. This same setup works good for belt squats. If I wanted to get more tension, I could use the Rogue belt, which has more settings, or I could just stand on cinder blocks. I could also add more bands between the band pegs if I wanted to increase the intensity of the exercise. For the last four years, I've been doing belt squats using a loading pin and boxes, and this worked and served me well before I got the Rhino. You are limited with how many plates you can put on a loading pin, and if you want a narrow stance, you've got to use 25s. Here I added a band to the movement just to get a different feel and to get some more tension at the top of the movement. And this worked well and it served me well for the last few years, but it was time to upgrade. And if you don't want to get the Rogue Rhino, give this a shot and hopefully this will serve you as well as it served me for the last few years. There's no loading the spine with this. Moving on to using the Rhino for belt squats. So one of the things that I was most curious about when I was looking at other people's videos was the line of drive with the pulley. And I didn't see a lot of people giving this angle, so I wanted to provide it for you all. So if I stand back here and perform the belt squat, I'll have the shearing force, as you can see, I'm being pulled forward. But if I stand closer to the carriage, the line of drive is straight up and straight down.
Moving on to 445s, this movement really feels great and I love that it takes the stress off of my lower back and there's no compression on the spine. It's also a lot easier on the shoulders, elbows, and wrists compared to doing a barbell squat where you have to put your hands behind your head basically to hold the bar in place. There's no problem getting extremely low and going below parallel with this belt squat machine. I have heard complaints using the Titan, for example, that you weren't able to get a full range of movement before the plates hit the floor. Next set, 445s and 225s, and it has been years since I've had this amount of weight on a straight barbell, so I'm really glad to be hitting these numbers again, even though I know it's not that heavy for most people, it is for me since I haven't been doing this movement, and it feels extremely effective, and I really look forward to being able to overload this movement in the weeks and months to come. My next set was 645s, and that was all in the world that I wanted for the day. But in the months to come, I really hope to get about 845s on there and perform 10 to 12 repetitions. So that's my goal before the summer's over. And to finish off the leg workout, I did 245s for 20 repetitions, kind of like one of Dante Trudell's Widowmakers from back in the day doing my DC training. It was a great way for me to build my legs up with those high rep sets at the end of a leg workout. I can't say enough good things about how smooth this movement feels, about how durable the machine feels, how effective the movement feels. I am just so impressed and I need to be careful because it's a brand new machine so I'm overly excited about it. But after having it for a few days, it makes me wanna use it every day and I know I've got to put the brakes on that because I have to take some rest days on leg day. But I, I want to use this machine as much as possible because I'm that excited about it. And if anyone's ever used the machine, you probably know what I'm talking about. It is just a phenomenal piece of equipment. And at $1,700, $2,000 total, it seems like a really good buy compared to other belt squats on the market and other pieces of equipment on the market. I would take this over a leg press or a hack squat or anything like that. If you want to do a squat that places greater emphasis on the posterior chain, step towards the end of the platform and sit back like you're doing a box squat or a hat field squat. And this keeps the line and drive vertical. Whereas when you see some people do, the box squat or the hat field squat on this machine, they step towards the other end of the platform and then they perform the movement. And then the line of drive is invertible. So this is a better way to do it so that you don't experience shear force. For more of a quad dominant squat, I have my wedges on the platform and I do have a stall mat underneath the wedges just so they're not as likely to slip and so they don't have metal on metal contact. I love doing marches on the belt squat. I feel that it's a great way to warm up the lower body. I also get a tremendous amount of glute activation, hamstring activation, as well as quad activation. Step ups are another great exercise for PT, warming up, or just something to do on your off days. Calf raises work great on this machine because you can go extremely heavy without loading the spine like you would on the Smith machine. I just have some 2x4s under me. The donkey calf raise will work good using the belt squat. Lunges work well for me on the platform. If I was 6'5", it may not work this easily.
Split squats also work great. A glute bridge will work on the rhino. I just have the carriage all the way at the bottom. One leg standing leg curls work good. I've just used some stall mats to elevate myself so I can get a full range of movement. And then you can also do knee raises. Abduction will work. Next, I'm going to move on to some upper body exercises. It is really nice using a pulley that is directly below you for a vertical line of drive compared to say something like a leveraging where the pulley is out in front of you. And for something like a bicep curl, it's not that big of a deal, but it will pull you forward a little bit. But if we look at the belt squat, and use this machine for curls, it's a straight line of drive. And you can do any variation of curls, one arm, hammer curl, various bars. Next, for shoulders, I have a dip belt and a carabiner attached to each handle, and then I can perform lateral raises. And you can do this with any pulley system. It's just nicer on a lower pulley like this for more of a vertical line of drive. In my second lever gym video, I use some daisy chains to do quite a few exercises. And I have this style of bar, which works really good so that uh, daisy chains don't slide. But you can basically make a lower pulley, kind of similar to a functional trainer, with a daisy chain on each end. So here, you still kind of have that isolateral function, like you would with a functional trainer, but just using one pulley. Before I continue with the belt squat, I do want to show that this same setup using the daisy chains can also be used for a high pulley, such as what I have here on the lever gym. I do give some credit to AJ Gorby for this on Instagram, because we were talking about ways to kind of do a fly movement using just one pulley overhead. And the daisy chains do work really well for that. So you can do pressing movements as well as fly movements. The balance is just a little funky, but it's still better than nothing. At some point, I do think that Rogue is going to have a high pulley option for the Rhino, but for the time being, you can also use a, an, a high pulley for other movements using these daisy chains and this bar setup that I'm showing. I do have quite a few people who are begging me to do a lever gym part four, so if I never do a lever gym part four for you all again, I do want to show a couple of movements that you can do using these daisy chains. Again, kind of similar to a functional trainer where you have this isolateral function, but only one overhead pulley. Now back to the belt squat machine using the same setup with the hammer bar, daisy chains, and a carabiner attached to each handle. You can do pressing movements. And again, you have that isolateral function. One side can't dominate the movement. And just to give you a close up how I'm doing this, I just tie the daisy chain in on itself. And then I use one of these large carabiners. Pretty simple setup. Seated rows work really well. 
Use the platform to brace your feet. And here I have those knockoff mag grips from Walmart. They're holding up well. They're at least six months old and they, know, they show no sign of wear. Next up, I'm going to do a chest support of row. I have some stall mats between the platform and the bench to give me a little greater range of motion. I have the angles 90 grips in place. Deadlifts work great. Of course, something like a shrug works great. In front of the body. Or behind the body. If you are someone who can safely and comfortably barbell squat, then you may not need the rogue rhino. Or if you're someone who's trying to build up your barbell squat numbers, the Rogue Rhino can be extremely helpful because it's not as taxing as a barbell squat, so you can use it on days where you're not doing the barbell squat. However, if you're someone like me whose days of barbell squats are over, this piece of equipment is invaluable. It's also the nicest piece of equipment I have, and it's my favorite piece of equipment. I hope you have found this review helpful. As always, I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.